crispy flatbreads. I don't know what flatbreads are. They are a basic kind of bread that's just uh, consisting of water, flour, yeast, and salt. That was quickly made. It's basically stretched over a pillow, and then this pillow is like slapped onto the walls of a very, very hot tandoor oven. Uh, we obviously don't have a tandoor oven, and we don't have pillows here. We're going to use a little bit of a different technique. These kind of flatbreads that we are making today, they're completely crispy. So it makes them really versatile because they can be used for many things. Like if you're a professional chef and you work in a restaurant, you can use them as like a base for canapes. Uh, you can stick them in the vase, like do like a decoration for the center of your table. Or if you're broke, like most people at the moment are broke. And it's like Valentine's Day soon and your missus probably needs some flowers. You can just bake her some of these long flatbreads, give it to her. Like she'll probably beat you in the face, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. Flatbreads are like the perfect vehicle for many other kinds of foods, like hummus, baba ganoush, curries, like whatever. It's just like your imagination can go <laughs> and something that can be scooped up. Scoopy, 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 scoopy. You can flavor them however you want. You can like sprinkle them with like uh, some salt, pistachio, some Egyptian dukkah, some spice mixes, maybe some uh, smoked paprika. Uh, they're very versatile and you can like change them as much as you want. You don't need special equipment to cook this and we don't need to stretch anything over a pillow. We're basically just gonna make the dough, rest it quickly, roll it out with a rolling pin, and then we're gonna bake it in the oven until it's completely crispy. Fermented grape juice. Right, so what do we need? Scales. Oh, there they are. Scales. It's very important to get scales. These are the ingredients needed to make all the variations of flatbreads we are preparing today. Don't get scared. You don't have to prepare the whole shebang. You can simply save this video for later and make the more complicated versions another day. For the most basic version, we will need yeast, flour, water, olive oil, and salt. To level it up, we are making a simple Middle Eastern seasoning called za'atar. It's very easy to do and your mouth will thank you for going the extra inch. To make our za'atar stick and give the breads a sparkly, sheeny, shiny finish, we need an egg to make an egg wash. If you're vegan, then use your favorite substitute thingy for egg. It'll still be great and we'll still love you no matter what. To make a black version we need to make an ancient coloring called ash. You can also use it for camouflage when you're doing role play. To make plain white flatbreads, start by weighing out 4 grams or 1 teaspoon of dry active yeast and adding 150 grams or 150 milliliters of room temperature water to it. Mix it well until combined and let it sit for 10 minutes on the countertop, out of reach of kids, dogs and strangers. Next, in a separate bowl, we need to weigh out 225 grams or 1.5 cups of plain or bread flour. Add 4 grams or 1 teaspoon of fine sea salt. 20 grams and one and a half tablespoons of olive oil and then the yeasty water mixture. Combine everything together until you have a homogenous dough mixture. It'll be a bit sticky, but don't worry. Sneak up on it with a damp towel and cover it. Let it rest for 30 minutes at room temperature. To make a rye flatbread, combine 150 grams or one cup rye flour, 50 grams or one third cup of buckwheat flour, 50 grams or one third of a cup white bread or plain flour and 4 grams or 1 teaspoon of salt. Give it a good whisking until thoroughly combined. In a separate bowl, add 4 grams or 1 teaspoon of yeast to 200 grams or 3 quarter cups plus 1 tablespoon of water and let it rest the same way as for the white breads. Once the yeasty water is ready, add the olive oil. Give it a whisk, combine and add it to your flour mixture. Mix to form a dough. It should not be sticky or too dry. Rye and buckwheat flours very wildly, so if it needs some attitude adjustment, then simply add either a bit more flour or water until your dough is the consistency of soft play dough and don't stick. Cover with a damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes at room temperature. To make ash, we need to burn something. In this case, we use nori. You can also use onion skins, but you need a ton. Rip up 10 nori sheets in a stainless steel container. Using a blowtorch, set it on fire and make sure it's completely burnt so that it's literally pitch black and won't burn anymore. Don't worry, it won't be bitter or taste burnt. One word of advice, it's best to do this outside or under a serious ventilator, as your smoke alarms will go off and your house will smell of a bonfire. The easiest way to get this is of course to simply buy some activated charcoal tablets from the pharmacy and blend it up in your coffee grinder. Which brings us to the next step of blitzing the burnt nori into a powder. Simply place into your coffee grinder and blitz until fine. To make the black flatbreads, start by blooming the yeast in the water the same way as for the plain flour flatbreads. The recipe is in the description. Next, add the ash along with the oil, flour and salt. Mix the ash through until you have a fairly dark 
black ball of dough. If you need a little bit more, like I need it here, then simply add a little bit more ash. Form it into a ball, cover with a damp cloth and rest for 30 minutes. Now that the dough has rested, dump it onto a floured surface and shape it into a smooth round ball. Let it rest for 10 minutes under a damp cloth. While it chills out, you can make the za'atar. To a spice grinder, link in the description for the one I use, add 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of coriander seeds, 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of fennel seeds, 5 grams or 1 tablespoon of cumin seeds, 4 grams or 1 tablespoon of dried oregano, 4 grams or 1 tablespoon of dried thyme, 4 grams or 1 teaspoon of sumac powder, 3 grams or half a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Give it a quick blend, making sure it's not completely powdered. 5 seconds should be fine. Add this mix to 8 grams or 1 tablespoon of white sesame seeds and 8 grams or 1 tablespoon of black sesame seeds. Give it a mix and your za'atar is ready. Turn your oven to 150 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, dump your dough ball back onto the same well-floured surface. Divide it into roughly equal sized pieces weighing about 25 grams each or slightly smaller than a ping pong ball. Once divided, roll it into the little balls like so. Once all your balls are done, prepare a few baking sheets lined with parchment or silicone baking mats. If you only have one baking sheet, then simply cover your balls with a damp cloth, as you do, while we roll out the rest. Flour the surface well and keep your flour nearby. These babies need plenty of flour, otherwise they will stick like shit to a blankie. Pinch the dough balls into an oblongish shape with your thumb and Forefinger, just to get the shape going. Start rolling it out by rolling from the center to the outsides, flipping and flowering after every two rolls until you have a long thin piece of dough that looks like a tie and as thick as two credit cards, if you still have those. Next, you will dock it with a pastry docker. Obviously, not to be confused with space docking. Alternatively, simply use a fork, it does the same job. This is to prevent it from turning into a hollow pillow bread, which is another recipe all by itself. Make a quick egg wash by mixing one medium egg with 25 grams or five teaspoons of water. Brush the dough with egg wash until it's completely covered with minimal naked spots. Sprinkle gently with za'atar if you're using it. If not, simply sprinkle with a touch of salt. Let the breads rest for 10 minutes before baking. Place into the oven and bake for 10 to 12 minutes or until nicely browned, making sure to turn the tray halfway through baking so the breads cook evenly. Place your flatbreads on a wire rack to cool down. Lo and behold, your new crispy friends for all occasions. But to make this a BFF, we need to dress it up a bit. You don't think I was just showing you how to crisp up dough in the oven, did you? My favorite topping for these breads has got to be hummus. Today, we're doing a quick white bean hummus. All you need is a tin of cooked arachina or small white beans, tahini paste, garlic, lemon, olive oil, and salt. If you want to make a classic one with chickpeas, then go for it. For other dips, I'll leave a link to my blog, Pants Down, Aprons On, in the description. Start by juicing half a lemon. Drain the beans and reserve the liquid. If you cook the beans freshly, keep the cooking liquid separate. We'll need it later, just a touch. In a jug blender, link for one like mine down in the description, add 6 grams or 2 medium garlic cloves, 250 grams or 1 and a quarter cup of beans, 100 grams or half a cup of tahini paste, 25 grams or 5 teaspoons of lemon juice, 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of reserved cooking liquid, 30 grams or 2 tablespoons of olive oil, 3 grams or half a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Blend that all until nice and smooth, taste for seasoning and you're ready to go. To sexy it up even more and take us for a ride on Aladdin's magic carpet, we're roasting 20 grams or 3 tablespoons of za'atar with 15 grams or one tablespoon of olive oil. We are making a little za'atar pesto if you like to drizzle on top of the hummus. To make a simple little canapé, start by breaking the flatbreads up into bite-sized pieces. Any type will do. Bite-sized because you want them to be eaten in one bite. Why? Have you ever seen the fury of a person trying to bite a canapé in half and then dropping half the contents down their front and onto their $5,000 Valentina evening gown? No, I didn't think so. If you did, then you know the meaning of bite-sized. Although some appetites are larger than others. Anyway, lovingly or just simply spread the hummus onto the piece of fat bread using a small spoon. Top with za'atar pesto and sprinkle with some crushed chili flakes if you're still not hot enough. To make something a bit more for the whole family, spread a bit of cream cheese on the flatbreads, followed by a slice or two of smoked or cured salmon. Finish it with capers, a squeeze of lemon juice and some freshly cracked black pepper. If you like the whole dill stuck in your teeth look, then add a little bit of fresh dill.
right, cool. So that's that. It's pretty easy. I know there's a lot, but you don't have to make all of it. Like you can just pick and choose your own adventure on this one. Just make a plain flower, simple one with a little bit of salt sprinkle on top or like go all out Joe Exotic and do yourself one with a za'atar, make a little bit of hummus, like cure your own salmon, the link down in the description. Beautiful citrus cured salmon it's on my website. You know, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. If you enjoyed this video, learned something and want to see more, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, bye bye!